Her legs are surgically lengthened, tottering by on leather contraptions, half stilts, half binders, that give her that sought-after shape. She can worry about the pain later, alone. Her dress, the designated female uniform specifically designed for specific sexuality, as well as conveniently highlighting those imperfections that would need to be fixed at her next appointment. Underneath the silk and cotton lie a myriad of scars. Any part of her body that could stand it has been dyed. Arms, eyes, hair, teeth, gold, green, blue, white. Her eyes are widened, her eyelashes extended, her mouth is a red, plump smear of chemicals that destroys her ability to laugh, touch, kiss, drink properly, fixed in a permanent, vapid smile. Her meals have been noted down, scrutinised, rationed since she was 12 years old. She counts her blessings. Many start younger. Her body started out as a small, pink ball of soft flesh. Her mind was always growing, learning, ready to embrace any passion, answer any question. Perfect little human. But in these enlightened modern days, humanity is unfashionable. Now, she is a broken, sharp, hardened mess. Her bones snapped into a hundred unnatural positions. Her head whirling with nothing but panic and sorrow and distorted funhouse mirror versions of herself, important directly from other people's eyes into her own head. As this defeated creature passes by, those who did this to her watch her go, lounging in their smug, self-satisfied innocence. Those otherworldly ones who put the dye in her hand, the scalpel to her flesh. They tutted each other, their own perfect red lips curved in a pout of pity. Their crystal tears fall down their porcelain cheeks as they ask each other, why couldn't she just love herself as she is? Thank you very much.